Flowers laid upon debris and the scattered remains of 298 people. These are the scenes from the site of this week's tragic crash of a Malaysian passenger jet in East Ukraine. 80 of those on board the airliner were children. Now, Russia and the UN have urged for an international investigation and a team of observers has arrived at the scene. They, in fact, they arrived on Friday. But as Arti's Roman Kosarev now reports, uh, the local self-proclaimed authorities say international involvement has actually been extremely slow in coming. The situation uh, here at the plane crash uh, site is certainly uh, different from what we encountered in the first and the second day. The area is now cordoned off uh, by uh, uh, plane closers, uh, militia, I imagine, and uh, the bodies of the victims, some of the bodies have been taken away. The self-defense forces in control of this area say they've made several appeals to the international community to get a team of experts here as soon as possible. The sense of urgency is boosted by the sweltering heat here. It's some 30 degrees and the bodies of the victims are starting to decompose rapidly. We want a comprehensive and objective investigation. But we don't feel like there's enthusiasm among the international community and experts. Several dozen experts are currently in Kiev. We're asking them, please come here faster. We are surprised and frankly angered that we have to keep the area untouched while we've been waiting for them for so long. Meanwhile, Kiev has already rushed to accuse the anti-government forces of meddling with the crash scene. The pro-Russia fighters are not allowing investigators to collect and transfer the evidence. They're also not letting search and rescue groups leave the area. The groups are currently working under the threat of armed force. Since then, the self-proclaimed republics have said they will guarantee the safety of international experts. But for now, the only international group to make it to the scene of the crash is the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe, the OSCE. But it seems that right now they can do little but stand by and watch. Although there is very little, uh, as we've reported, there's very little security on the perimeter of the crash site, we did notice that when you arrived today, there was a cordon of uh, armed uh, security personnel on both sides of the roadway. The process uh, was basically as follows, is that uh, people go out, they spot the body, they photograph it, video it, and then the body is placed in the bag and put beside the roadway. Debris from the plane is strewn over a 20-kilometer radius, which is likely to slow down the investigation. And that large area is right in the middle of a conflict zone. All this means that a clear analysis of how this plane came to crash in a field in eastern Ukraine is unlikely to come soon, if indeed it comes at all. And that is a heavy burden for many of the relatives of the victims who plan to come here soon to the scene of the disaster. Roman Kosarev, RT. Eastern Ukraine. All right, let's take a look at the chronology of the events that ran up to the crash. 12.15 p.m. local time, the plane left Amsterdam for Kuala Lumpur. 4.21 p.m. Ukrainian time, all radio and radar contact with the flight is lost. Within the hour, the crash site located, though there were no survivors. Now, by 8 p.m., both Kiev and anti-government troops had denied shooting down the plane, instead of pinning the blame on each other. Then the process of ident identifying the victims began, leaving Malaysian authorities ultimately uh, the task to notify hundreds of grief-stricken relatives, uh, the vast majority of those, of course, dealing with a state of shock.